welcome to the Enchantress Society with Tia Johnson, a place where you get to be you, where you get to unlock your magic in a sacred and judgment-free zone. The Enchantress Society is your witchy sisterhood of enchanting women who guides and supports you along your spiritual journey from the mundane to the magical. I invite you to sit for a spell as I interview guests and spill the spiritual tea on how we can create the magical life we deserve. Hello, Enchantresses, and welcome back to another amazing episode. I cannot wait to introduce you to my friend, Amanda, so we can dive into this episode's topic. All right. So Amanda Sakharov is a psychic shadow visionary who plays with reality through their energy healing and psychic abilities to create inner child healing experiences, intuitive empowerment rituals, and magically enchanted products. You can work with Amanda for deep healing and psychic connection at Amanda Zakharoff and Intuitive. Connect with them and other witchy guests on their podcast, Witchy and Weird Pod. Purchase enchanted products and jewelry at Occult Accumulants or learn more about their Jewish ancestry at Be Shirt Baddies. All Instagram handles are in the description of this episode, so go check them out, and let's dive into it. Yeah, so I am thrilled to have you here, Amanda, or I should say talk to you again, uh, because you were one of the speakers at the uh, the Sex Goddess uh, Virtual Summit last year, so let's get into it. Hi. And I remember when... Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, no problem. No problem. It's always a pleasure. And when we were, you know, talking before uh, we started recording, you know, the the protection and the cleansing and how that's so important. And so my my first question is, and I was thinking like, hmm, what do you think should come first, protection or cleansing? Because I was trying to figure out what do I do first? And like when I began, what did I do first? I can't remember. Yeah, so I guess some circumstances it might be different, but generally I do, um, I feel like I kind of do them at the same time. Mm. I feel like it depends. I So what I'm feeling like hearing intuitively is kind of like, maybe it feels safer first to protect yourself. Because Mm -hmm. maybe some people might feel weird about like cleansing because then it might make you feel like energetically vulnerable. Like I emptied out all of this space and now anything could still come in. So maybe like making sure you feel protected and safe to do the cleansing because in the protection, you can set your own boundary. Like you can say, I'm protecting and only what I want is in the space or only what I want is coming into my energy. And then you can cleanse out the stuff that you don't want. Mm, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, because when you do cleanse, you are open and vulnerable. That's, yeah, that's a good uh, point there. Because when once we do that cleansing, we are recognizing the people who we need to remove from our lives, the situations we need to step back from. And that could be a very vulnerable feeling and experience. And also that that sense of loss in a way, because at one point all that was our world and our support system yeah and if you're talking specifically around people like a big way that we protect ourselves is by setting a boundary so sometimes we might not even be aware of what we need to cleanse like what Mm. stuff we need to change until we set that boundary and we see how the other person reacts you know like that's part of like the protection stuff of like okay this is as far as I'm willing to go like are you okay with that they might be like, no, I'm, I don't want to do this at all. <laughs> and then you can choose like how you want to proceed with like the cleansing part of that. Like how much do you want to be around them? How much do you want them in your life? So yeah, I feel like the protection can also like point out the the pieces that aren't feeling or sitting right with us too. But yeah, it, it can be, it can be hard when you're removing those things, especially if it's like relationships with people. Oh, absolutely. So let's let's dive into protection then for a, a little while. So w- when it comes to protection, 
And let's say someone, let's talk about uh, regarding people because that's a big thing. Uh, so when, when it comes to that and someone is just like, you know what, I'm so tired of being in this. Re- and when I say relationships, I mean with, with anyone, you know, whether it's your parent or a natural person who you have an intimate relationship with, how can they go about first and in a safe way with themselves, understanding how they can set up protection before they can even have that boundary established? Like, wh- wh- What can they do with themselves first to, to gear them up for that? Yeah, that's a really good step. I feel like sometimes we skip that step. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I know I do that. I just go in like the emotions are high and I set the boundary. And I, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> uh, so, it's like reverse engineering, you're going to do this. And then yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like I set a really strong boundary and then I'm like, actually, I didn't really need to do that. I'm sorry. I came out so strong. <laughs> Um, yeah, I would say, you know, some of it is long term, some of it is short term, I always recommend people, you know, being emotionally vulnerable, energetically vulnerable with yourself and having a practice of like checking in, and giving yourself space to like feel whatever is going on or to heal it, whatever you're working on. Because I feel like that's going to be a really good indicator before we're creating boundaries of like, what is feeling off for us, what we feel like we need to pivot around or, you know, like create a boundary for. So like checking in with yourself, um, let's say if it's with a specific relationship, like maybe doing some journaling or reflection or talking to somebody who's like a third party, maybe like a therapist or professional or another friend um, to kind of like get your feelings out. So, you know, actually how you're feeling about the situation without the other person present Or Mm. even without like thinking about like their needs, because, you know, chances are, if you're feeling like you need to set a boundary, you're already letting them, you know, take more than um, you in the relationship. Mm. Um, So sitting down and saying, like, do I actually feel like asking yourself questions like, do I actually like this relationship? Is it happy? Am I getting joy out of it? Or like, what parts of it aren't feeling right to me, what parts of it are, you know, hurting my feelings, like whatever the specific situation or, you know, thing is going on, just to kind of like, sift through that and to see how it feels. Um, Mm. Or even just like reflecting on the situation or the person and seeing how your body feels like, does your body feel like, like tighter? Does it get anxious? Do you immediately think about like their feelings first? You know, those are indications that, maybe we need to sit down and like reassess um, Mm -hmm. what what is working for us. Um, And I would say too, like, I know a lot of people I work with, it's hard for them to even like set the boundary. So practicing that too, right? So that's, that's a practice, like a a lifelong practice of setting boundaries, especially Mm -hmm. if you're like a people pleaser, or you don't value yourself high enough. Um, doing smaller boundaries that maybe don't have anything to do with that person or that relationship, but are ways for you to kind of like build that muscle memory for setting a boundary and to feel okay with that, you know, because if it's something really big, like an example, like if you're like, okay, I need, I don't think I, I'm needing to have a relationship with my parent right now. Like it's just too much for me. Like that can be really hard to set a boundary around and to stick to that boundary So if you have practice with smaller things, like maybe boundaries with yourself, boundaries with Mm -hmm. other people that you know would be like, you know, receptive to it, um, then it'll be a little bit easier because you've had that practice of, I know what it feels like to stand in my power. I know what it feels like to, you know, stand up for myself or to hear a no Mm -hmm. from somebody and be like, okay, like, this is still how I feel. I'm not going to back down about this. So I definitely think like those would be good first steps. And like I said, most of them are like longer practices right so it's okay if this is like something that feels weird when you first start it or first try it especially if you're not used to it and that's why I always talk about having a routine of checking in with your body because if we never ask ourselves how do I feel about this am I just throwing myself into it and triggering myself am I just you know not thinking about my feelings and pushing them down or disassociating from them, it's going to be harder to ask yourself, like, does this feel right to me? Do I feel okay with this? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I love that so, so much. And some, well, many things stuck out to me, but when you said to do that without thinking of their needs, Mm -hmm. it made me think about the inner child 
And mm-hmm. I know that you work with inner child. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, when, when, when we do work on, you know, ourselves and then by extension, finally having boundaries with other people, there is that feeling of guilt and, you know, what would that look like? And it, a lot of it goes back to the inner child. Can you uh, talk a little bit about how we can even touch base with our, our well, well, you talked about ourselves, but also our inner child that can help us even more with that? Because that's what I learned, too, is that once I started talking with my inner child, it was just like, like you said, it's OK. You know, we don't have to worry about that. Yeah, yeah. So like the way that I learned this was like I grew up in a childhood where like I was responsible for multiple people's emotions. And so for me, I grew up thinking that that was normal, right? Like that's why I said mm-hmm. like don't think about the other person's needs because I thought it was normal to have to be responsible for multiple people's needs. Like um and then when I was older, I when I was doing inner child work too, like I learned that you know, in healthy communication, the other person will communicate to you their feelings, they will communicate their needs and their boundaries. And you just need to be responsible for yourself and your needs and your boundaries. That's what healthy communication looks like. So, you know, working with the inner child is going to be like a really potent way to help you get into that. If maybe that's like a new concept of like not thinking about the other person, or like you said, if it's like harder for you to not think about the other person, I think sometimes especially as adults, when we're working with our inner child, it can feel like we're, we're thinking about another person, because we're thinking about like this wounded child that is inside of us. And then we kind of get like a, like a parental energy, like a mama bear energy about it. And Mm -hmm. so then we turn to pivot to say, like, what do they need? And how can they feel better? How can they get their needs met? Because yeah, a lot of it is stemming, it's going to stem from our childhood. So your inner child you just ask them. So when I work with my clients and stuff, I ask them like in their own words, ask the inner, your inner child, like what's going on for them and what they need. And so you're going to get a very clear answer from them. And usually they're not thinking about, oh, well, you know, I need this, but this other person is really probably going through that, you know, like, they're just going to tell you like, I wish I had this more, or I wish I had this support. I wish I felt safer. Um, and asking those types of questions, like, it doesn't matter if you do visualization or journaling or like automatic writing with them. Um, but making sure that you're addressing them, because we often think about maybe like we try and put our shoes in our inner child's position. And it's a completely different answer if we're answering as adults having had mm-hmm. years past, versus if we ask our inner child, it's usually a completely different answer and a theirs is more simple theirs is just like I wish I need this it's like a basic need like more support more safety more love and we're like well you know we make it into like a math equation and we're factoring all these things (laughs) Mm -hmm. (laughs) what's the value of x I don't know (laughs) yeah yeah so definitely the inner child like if you're struggling like finding those answers for yourself like does it feel right to me what do I need like then asking the inner child is going to be a huge way to get that direct answer, that simple answer. Um, and usually the most impactful answer, because the roots usually go down deep to something that's like really um, like traumatic or holding, you know, strongly in our hearts. Um, and then we can help to like remove that instead of maybe like upper layers of things that um, aren't really going to fully solve the problem. Mm-hmm. Amazing. Yes. So once we did that internal work, now we're ready to set the boundaries with people. So what what are or even so, what are some of the stuff that you took initially to help set up boundaries with people or even situations? Yeah. So, you know, in healthy communication, like I learned from like um like a social worker in my childhood. Um <laughs> you know, using I statements. So that Mm. makes a like a world of difference. Like, we never know what kind of stuff the other person is going through unless they tell us, Mm -hmm. right? Like, that's kind of like the rule that you want to set in for healthy communication is like, I'm not going to assume I'm not going to intuit. I'm just going to wait for them to tell me and I'm just going to focus on me, right? Um, Some people obviously, like, it's a little more toxic than that. Um, But if you use I statements, then you're not triggering them and you're not, you know, aggravating their inner child or their trauma as much. 
So you're not coming in hot and saying like, you did this and you hurt my feelings and I don't want to be friends with you anymore. Instead, you say like, I'm feeling very hurt and I wish I had more of this, you know, in the relationship. Are you willing to help with me or help me work on that or negotiate or meet me halfway? Or maybe you're just like past that point and you're like, I think I need, you know, a break. I want a break. So definitely Mm -hmm. trying to come in and like use an I statement or something that's like, not as directed as the other person um, because then it just, it might trigger them and then it might become about them and you never really get to say your boundary at all. Mm -hmm. Um, I would definitely do that. I would say like, if you're feeling a little uneasy about it or worried about it, like writing it down and practicing it would definitely be good. Like, you know, I have an Aries moon. So sometimes it comes out like really hot headed. (laughs) (laughs) Just like, without like thinking about it and thinking like, okay, what's the best way that I can explain this to the other person? Um, For me, I always find with setting boundaries, kind of explaining where you're coming from as much as you want to helps the other person understand. Because sometimes if we just come in, we're like, hey, I need to talk to you. I don't think we should be friends anymore. The person's gonna be like, whoa, where did this come from? Like, what are you talking about? So if we maybe explain to them, like, I'm feeling this way and it's kind of been for a while. And, you know, like I tried to do something about it and it wasn't listened to. And, you know, Mm -hmm. if you're explaining like your thought process of maybe just for now, we'll see, we can always check back in. This isn't finite, you know, or final. Um, That can help too, because sometimes people, again, aren't, they're hearing this and all they're hearing is I'm a terrible person. They don't want to be friends with me anymore. (laughs) Right. (laughs) And so they might just be like going everywhere. And if you're like, well, actually, it's not really about that. Like, this is what I'm going through. This is what I need. That can help to alleviate some of their like worrying and make sure that you're accurately communicating everything that you needed to communicate. Um, And I would also say like, even if you do write it down, that also helps you to not like belittle your needs because when I Mm -hmm. was first doing this like I would have these long conversations with myself in my head I'm going to tell them this and I'm going to tell them that and I'm going to make sure that all my needs are met and then we get kind of scared or fearful when we start talking about it and then we just all that long list of things that we wanted to make sure we mentioned we like cross a bunch of them out and we only say two things and then we're like yeah actually it's okay like you don't need to do the boundary you know so Mm -hmm. making sure that you're like advocating for yourself and standing up for yourself and not you know taking what feelings you had that you took the time to connect with and just like throwing them out the window when the conversation comes um so if you need to like text it to them send it to them in an email write it on a piece of paper and have them read it in front of you like those are different ways that you can do it if it's like hard for you to actually verbalize the boundary, or if you feel like I'm just going to go back on my words and I'm not going to say all my needs, then that's mm-hmm. a good way to make sure you get everything out there. Um, let's see what the original question. I'm like, dang, I feel like I went really far from the original question. <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm loving it. Okay. Yeah. So those are different ways that we can communicate our boundaries with people. Oh, and the other thing that I love doing, um, is like setting the tone for the stage, right? So Mm -hmm. for me, like, I wouldn't want to just be like, hanging out with my boyfriend, and then we're having a good time. And he's like, hey, so by the way, like, I want to set this boundary with you. Like, I think it's better if we let the person know, like, you know, depending upon who you are, and who the other person is, like, give them maybe some, you know, forewarning to get emotionally ready for this, right? Like, Mm -hmm. I'll usually sit down with my boyfriend and I'll say like, hey, I want to tell you something that's really important to me. Can I have your undivided attention? I'm going to try and explain it as best as I can. You know, hopefully it doesn't come out hurtful. Hopefully, like you understand this, like, I think that it makes a really big difference when you're setting the tone for the conversation and telling them like this is important to me I'm communicating to you that this might be hard for me this is something I'm working on I might not do this perfectly but please bear with me that makes a big difference because it takes a lot of pressure off of you to feel like I need to do everything right I I need to do this like perfectly otherwise it's not going to come out and we'll, we won't have like a bad falling out but 
it also makes it easier for the other person to just know where you're coming from, where you're starting out and like what the intention is behind it. Because, you know, if you're stating stuff that's having to do with your emotions, you might cry, you might get angry, you might say that like a hurtful thing by accident. But if you already told them in the beginning, like, please bear with me, I'm trying, then it makes it a lot more, they'll like receive it a lot easier. Um, and you know, we talking about protection and cleansing, like some people, like we said, are toxic, maybe even doing like a spell work or energetic work to protect yourself going mm-hmm. in the situation is going to be really important. Like a lot of the times I'm not going to lie, like a hundred percent of the time I visit my family, I have crystals on me, like <laughs> right, right, right. Yep. trying to protect <laughs> my energy and my vibration. So I think that like, shouldn't be like, you know, discounted in these kind of like muggles conversations that if you feel that you need that extra support, like call upon your guides, do your, you know, cleansing, energetic cleansing and protection ritual, like put on your protection oil or your crystals, like, or crystals that help with like processing emotions and stuff. Like that's always extra stuff that will just help you feel safer and more prepared to share something that might be hard to share. Mm Hmm. I am in love with this process. And I was also taking notes. I love how you said, uh, well, first, I love that you you gave options, you know, email, you know, uh, other than being verbal, because sometimes that is hard. And I've done it in the past before I even knew that was a thing because I was emotionally charged. Like, I don't know how else to express this. Mm-hmm. Uh, Cause I have a lot of fire in my chart. You, you mentioned, you know, your Aries. I'm just like, yeah, I can <laughs> Cause it's one of those things that it does emotionally charge you. Mm-hmm. So I like that you presented the options because sometimes it is hard to put it together and, when, when you said to have that list, it's like a rehearsal. So you don't miss your points or, you know, get sidetracked because someone is hearing I'm a horrible person and they don't want to be my friend because sometimes people, they don't realize that they're overstepping boundaries because we weren't vocal about it. And, you know, and again, it's a case by case basis. Sometimes it goes back to our inner child or people pleasing, things like that, and they don't realize it. Not everyone who oversteps boundaries is doing it on purpose. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I love that you, you have, you know, the lists, you can go over it. And I love, 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 love how you said set the tone. Mm-hmm. There is definitely value in a time and place. It's like you said, you're having dinner with someone <laughs> and you're just like, yeah, you know what? The other night when you said that, like, that's maybe not the best time. <laughs> But if you give someone of a heads up or you say, hey, as opposed to just we need to talk, but hey, look, I I really want to go over this. This is how I'm feeling. This is what I want to talk about. That is such a refreshing approach I have never heard before. And, you know, for someone who is willing to listen, I think that's amazing because now you're being direct. Mm -hmm. It's not like what you were saying, don't intuit, because sometimes our intuition can be um off because we're so emotionally charged you know it's a combination of you know we see something and we're trying to pick up on it and it can get a little bit distorted because we're not clear-minded at that time so I love how it's direct this is how I'm feeling I have my list and it's it's unfortunate sometimes especially now when being direct seems to be offensive at times it's just like oh they said this and it's like no 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 you're not hearing a person this is how they feel (laughs) and it's not that they're attacking you you just have to hear them out Mm -hmm. so I love that you you're taking that approach it's refreshing it's it provides options and it also gives the person to process their feelings stay on course so they can get through all those points and then they can make that determination if that person is going to you know respect their boundaries and all that jazz and if they don't then you know now at least that person has all the information they need to go forward as Mm -hmm. opposed to guessing and so forth yeah yeah (laughs) and even with uh like the protection manager, I like that you said that afterwards too, because, you know, I'm all about frameworks. <laughs> it's just not going to work if we're not, you know, direct and, and understanding with that. So with, with the, the cleansing part, I know that's also 
multi-layered. So what are some of the things you do to help with that cleansing process now that we have our boundaries established, we, we you know, had that conversation with ourselves, our inner child, what are some of the, the cleansing practices that you use? Mm. So like immediately right after like some heaviness has happened, like emotional work, I actually learned this from animals. So um, I've, from the research I've done, like, I feel like most animals do this, but I learned it from my dog. So I don't know if anyone who's listening or if you've noticed, like after dogs, like get into a fight or they're like, like barking at somebody, they usually shake their whole body. Mm. And that's actually Mm -hmm. like a nervous system, um, like recalibration method. So if it works for us too. So if you are like, oh, I feel like the heaviness, like still sitting on my shoulders, like my, uh, my body is tense, like, like shake it out, like just move your body, like really quickly for a couple of seconds, you know, take some deep breaths and release that energy. So you're not holding on to that conversation directly in your body. That's like the immediate one that I love to do. Um, Sometimes I'll even like open the window, like get some air, like just having like Mm -hmm. freshness come in. Um, So for other like more like not immediately after the conversation cleansing, there's like a few different things that you can do. Um, Do you are we focusing on like relationships and things like that? Oh, it, it, it could be anything. Okay. So I would say like, mentally cleansing is also important because if we have that conversation we might be thinking afterwards oh no I did something wrong I'm worrying I about the other person so like making Mm -hmm. sure we're cleansing ourselves from the need to be responsible for them even after the fact um or like kind of training our brain to stop having that process of like worrying uh, about things that we already did our best to communicate about Um, so the way that you can do that, and this is also a process, right? A lot of these things are practices. Um, uh, you can, every time those thoughts come up, just acknowledge them. And then I like to provide like an, a contrary like belief. So it's like this program is running where I'm worrying and I'm blaming myself and I'm, you know, making a whole story in my head about what they're feeling and what's going on and all this, like, just stopping that and saying, like, I acknowledge that I'm a little bit worried because this is a new practice for me, or this is a new thing that I'm doing. Um, Mm -hmm. And instead, I'd like to, and then you can insert your own thing, like, and it doesn't need to be like fully, I find it's harder if you're like, instead, I want to feel absolutely amazing about this. Like, um, it's okay to take it in steps. Like, I want to feel like a little bit better about this. I want to acknowledge that I don't need to be as scared about this. I don't need to worry as much about this or like, they're an adult, like they can take care of their own feelings, you know, like doing, st- um, smaller steps and smaller, like, um, I kind of, I guess they're technically affirmations, but just repeating them over and over. Cause it takes a while to train your brain. So acknowledging that, you are trying to break out of this trauma response or this pattern. And it will take some time to cleanse like your mind from being worried about other people or being thinking about other people. Um, And, you know, especially if this is somebody that we were close to, we might have an energetic like connection with them. Um, So acknowledging that too, like feeling if you're, you're still trying to tap into their energy, you're still being open to their energy So, um, you know, some people, this is like super easy to figure out, like if you're highly intuitive or you're tapped into your intuition, you, you can just focus on them, on their energy and see what I like to do personally is like, um, they call it like cord cutting. I don't do like the actual like candle cord cutting, but Mm -hmm. I will try and visualize with, you know, like sit down and meditate and visualize if there is like, I'll see like an energetic cord, um, from my body to theirs or if it's like a specific like situation or thing that happened and so then you can be aware of that cord and usually I'll be able to see like I'll kind of like investigate it to see like I'll pull on it a little bit to see like how deep it is how um, how strong it's like tied in sometimes it's like oh this is ready to be removed or I can just like visualize it being cut and you know my energy is not going to travel over to them and their energy is being returned back to them. Um, Some of them, if it's like a deeper trauma or like a deeper relationship, you might have to do it every day for a while, or it might not be ready. You're not ready fully to remove that. Right. So you can create like a protection boundary around just that person 
or yourself. Um, and uh, I was going to say something and then I forgot. Um, cleansing, the cord. Mm. Yeah. So the cord, <laughs> I'm trying to give my train of thought back. No worries. It happens to me mid sentence often. I'm like, wait, oh my God, what's the word I was going to say? Just change the sentence. <laughs> like I have like, like so many things that I want to share that they're all like together. I'm like, oh, dang it. Follow the train of thought. Um, so yeah, so that's something that you can do is to kind of see where it's at. Um, I will say like, I teach my clients, um, for like energetic cleansing, there's like a saying that I like to do. Um, this kind of goes with that visualization of like knowing if the cord is still there. Um, I'll say like, I, any thoughts, feelings, emotions, energy that I may have taken on from other people, I return that back to sender Mm -hmm. And you can return it with love or you can just return it to them if you're not feeling like you want to send them that love. Um, And then you would do the reverse of that. So you would say like any of my thoughts, feelings, and emotions that I may have given. And you can say like subconsciously or consciously throughout all time and space, you know, like you can do like a catch all. You would say, I I recall those back to me. Um, And I usually like to frame it as like any of my power, my energy, that I've given away. Um, and usually I like to imagine it all gathering into a white ball, like either right in, in front of my heart or my solar plexus. And then I like to cleanse it first. Um, I'll usually, <laughs> my visualization that I've used recently is um, it goes in like this kind of like Tron net, like cyber net looking thing that's in the shape of a pink heart. And then it kind of just like cleanses it maybe like a uv cleanser thing oh i love that that's cool i like yeah. that that's a great visual thing to, yeah i like that it's yeah like it doesn't have to be like boring it could be like if you have your own like actual cleansing thing that you like like in real life you can use it um and then i let it like absorb back into my body so that's one way that you can like make sure you're re-cleansing your energy now that mm-hmm. can be done like once a day, multiple times a day, as much as you feel like you need it for people who are like highly intuitive or highly emotional, or you're doing a lot of like customer service or like energetic work. Um, I love to do it every day. Um, I'm a cancer son, so I resonate a lot with water. I usually will do that visualization while I'm in the shower. And mm-hmm. just imagine like all the water, like carrying out anything that, you know, I don't want to keep from other people going down the drain and back to them. And then I recall everything back to me. Um, Sometimes if it's like in the middle of the day and I just had like a heavy session with somebody, I'll just run my hands under like cold water um, and do the same exact thing. I find like having a like physical thing to do while I'm saying it helps me to like focus and like get through it and like feel like it's actually happening. Um, You know, like that's probably like an ADHD thing, but (laughs) that's just the reality of it. It's okay. (laughs) Yeah. So if you have like a preferred like um, element that you want to use, like uh, doing it in the dirt, like I'll sometimes just like go outside and put my hands in the grass or the dirt and do that, you know, feeling that connection with the earth Um, and, you know, fire. I don't know, like if you want to write down the thing that you're releasing and put it, you know, in the fire safely and air sometimes I'll do it with like gusts of wind, like just go outside and I'll like have the wind blow through me. And then I just Mm -hmm. imagine like everything's like blowing off of me, you know? So I like to make it as fun as possible. Like I have my little heart visualization, like go, I always tell people like go with whatever your intuition is like what visualization or what feeling you're being drawn to. Like sometimes people get freaked out because they're like, it's not exactly how they told me to do it. And so I can't do it that way. Um, but it's going to be stronger if it's something you resonate with. Um, you know, like if you go outside and you close your eyes and you stand in the wind and you visualize you're in like a field of sunflowers because you love sunflowers, you know, like whatever mm-hmm. visualization is coming through that, you know, if you feel like you see little, all of those little emotions from other people, like drifting away as little leaves in the wind, like it can be something really simple or really fun. Um, I connect more to the fun stuff. It makes me feel like it's more believable. Like, <laughs> mm-hmm, more right, fun. right. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, finding whatever thing works for you for the visualization. Um, and it can change. Like I've changed, I used to use um, for cleansing my energy. 
a really like strong one that I connect to that I go back to a lot is it might seem weird for some people, but I love like the energy of trees. I work with them a lot. So I would imagine myself being like kind of like buried in the dirt, like uh, in like a tree grove, like surrounded by like a circle of trees. And Mm -hmm. so that would just make me feel like, okay, my whole entire body is in the dirt. So there's no stone that is left unturned. There's no energy leak that could be anywhere. Like I'm cleansing every single part of my body. And I would feel like supported and loved, not like I was being buried alive, but like, Mm -hmm. it would feel like good for me. Um, Sometimes I would imagine like being wrapped up in like a kind of like a hammock in the trees. So Mm -hmm. whatever, yeah, whatever thing, like if you imagine yourself at the beach, you know, and your feet are the water comes on your feet and it's pulling away everything down out of your feet like there's so many different I know all of mine are nature based but (laughs) I I love it yeah and you know that's the thing sometimes uh, people forget about that because we are just inundated with so much information of you know go here to get, you know, your, your, your cleansing and spirituality or take this supplement to get cleansed. You can literally go outside. Yeah. <laughs> you don't have to spend money. You can open up your window, have someone open the window for you, take a walk. I love that. Especially the wind. I, I love that. Especially when it's the beginning of fall mm-hmm. and it's like, like that air is so specific mm-hmm. or like a cool winter's night. The air just feels so crystal clean. You know, it, it's like the, the air during a different season has its own feeling and and you're right it's just it's something about the wind it's something about just imagining you know like you said with the dirt or being a hammock in the trees when I was a kid I used to lay on the bed and and look at the window Mm. in in my room or in my grandmother's room and the trees would be so big that it looked like I was somewhere tropical not in you know South Philadelphia I love (laughs) Philly don't get me wrong but when I would look up at the trees it just looked tropical especially during the summertime the sky's blue and the the leaves are green or if I was in another room in the house and I look up at the window it looked like the ocean and we had this one uh pole I guess like the telephone pole there was nothing on there it was just connecting the wires it looked like a pole that a seagull would be on so I'm imagining myself at sea you know just leaning on the bed looking up at the window I just transported somewhere else and it was the most beautiful thing ever so yeah I I love that you recommended that because it can be simple and you just do it several times and you don't have to spend money to do it it could be a very easy user-friendly, non-cost-effective until you're ready to work with someone, you know, until you're ready to take that step. But the initial steps, you can use the resources that are right there. And I love it. And it's funny when you said, you know, send the energy back. I immediately thought, well, when you said send the energy back with love or, you know, that person really did something wrong, just give it back. I thought about the clip from Cardi B where she goes, I wish you well in hell. And she started laughing. <laughs> I was just like, it's one of those things where, you know, you really had to think about um, the feeling and emotion that, that you, you, you are experiencing at that time, like you were saying when you're doing this and to document that, because now you can really think about, as you were saying, you know, do it several times a day or maybe once a day. So this is really about, you know, validating your feelings, understanding, you know, where that's actually coming from. And I also really appreciated that you said they're an adult, like the person who you're setting the boundaries with, they are an adult. So that's not on us, you know, as we were saying earlier, to put their emotions before our own. They're an adult, and if they are not willing to honor our boundaries, which are pretty fair, then that's on them at a certain point. We can only do but so much. Yeah. Yeah, there's this saying that I um, I forgot who said it, but it's really, it, like, it's been going around a lot. And it says, like, the people... Um, who benefited the most from you not having a boundary are the ones who are going to be the most upset about it, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's important to recognize that like we might in the moment feel like, Oh, well they're, you know, gaslighting me or they're telling me what about my feelings and what about this? And you did this to me. And it's like, they're basically upset that now they won't be having, you know, unlimited access to our energy or, you know, whatever we're providing for them. And so they're trying to like, hold on to that. So it's important to recognize that 
maybe even prepare yourself for like you know Mm -hmm. different outcomes and knowing that like that doesn't have like a reflection on you and who you are it's maybe like we said like their trauma or their benefit from your lack of boundaries wherever they're at in their life what they're going through you know maybe nobody ever gave them that so now they're being upset that you're asking for them to give it to you right (laughs) so it's important to also know like this isn't like that's why I like setting the stage in the conversation because then if the other person tries to like set it on you and like gaslight you and be like, well, what about my feelings? Or like, well, you did this to me. Then you can like return it back to remember in the beginning, like we said, we were going to talk about this issue that I had, you know, or this boundary that I wanted to set. And this is what this conversation is about because I'm deciding and choosing to stand up for myself and to communicate my needs to you. So you know, like, let's return it back to the conversation or topic at hand. Like, if you also want to voice your opinion about an issue that you have with me, like, you are more than welcome to, but like, communicate that to me in a time, Mm -hmm. you know, like, do what I did, like, set it up or like, you know, don't just do it in the middle of like, we're talking about my feelings and not because that's a good way Mm -hmm. to tell them, like, your feelings are valid, but this isn't the space that we agreed upon right now we agreed to talk about my feelings and what I'm going through and when you're ready you can you know come to me or you know depends what the boundary is if you're like we're done you know but yeah you can come to me after and when you're ready to talk about that like I would love to but right now we're discussing me right right like it's it's me right now we're not going to turn this conversation to to being on you We need to first understand where I'm coming from. Like I have the platform right now. I'm I'm standing firm on this and then you can have your platform, but I'm the one who who has been offended. (laughs) So I need to understand. I need you to understand that this is my time. I love that. Yeah. And I think like even getting that verbal communication too from them like did you understand that do you have questions like do you Mm -hmm. like you know now that you understand my boundary now we could talk about whatever you were going through I just want to make sure like you understand me before we move on you know like that Mm -hmm. can be hard to do (laughs) with certain people yeah Mm -hmm. sure sure practice yeah everything is a a case-by-case basis but I love the open dialogue because you know sometimes people don't realize what they're doing because that's the way it's always been done Mm -hmm. and once you bring that to the light if they still choose to which leads to my next question do that then now you have to make that decision so what if okay we've done all the protection and cleansing and the person agreed but really they agree thinking like oh this is going to be temporary and i'll just you know Mm -hmm. do one thing here one thing there you know to to bring back what they used to do. So at that point, when a person is, let's say it's a month or two months after the talk, both sides had their talk, but the person's like, yeah, 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 yeah. They're all talk. I'll give her about a month or so. I'll give them, I'll give him about a month or so. And we'll see. What do you do when that person now, now tries to revert back to their old ways? Yeah. So I'll take it a step back first. One thing I do like to do during the conversation is to have like, make sure that there is like a closure or like an actionable Mm. step. So Mm. like, I will try and bring to the table, like, that's why it's important to reflect and think like, what do I need? So maybe we're just asking them to, you know, stop exhibiting a behavior. um, And we can like bring that up and say like, I would love it. You know, like at the end of the conversation, we're in agreement, like agreement, you're gonna, you know, like practice to not do this anymore. And is it okay for me to call you out if you do that again? You know, like having some kind of like working thing where it's like, what do you need from me? Okay. What can I help you with? You know? So if you did have that established and then that person starts like going back on it after a few months, then it's easier to be like, Oh, Hey, remember, like you said, I should call you out if you're doing the behavior again, because it's going to take you a little bit of time to, you know, get past that. So that makes it a lot easier to stand your ground Mm -hmm. Um, when the boundary is being crossed is like by setting yourself up for success to have that, like uh, you said, this was okay for me to do, or, you know, we agreed that we were going to do this, what happened. Um, So that will help you in the long run. But if they are like going back on it, um, I guess it, it would, it would definitely be like case by case, but this is where you would kind of regroup and go back to your original feelings and sit down and say like, I said everything that I could say or that I needed to say that I felt like I needed to, Um, you know, they 
clearly aren't listening to this. So how do I feel? Like, is this giving them another shot? Have I already given them three before? You know, like, am I deciding that I need to set a stronger boundary now because they're clearly not taking me seriously? Um, you know, sometimes they don't recognize it and maybe we didn't have that kind of like action step. So then that's the thing that you could do is be like, Hey, I realize, you know, we talked about it and you seem pretty genuine. Maybe we can have an action step. Like, would it help if I did this? Or like, could you think about a way that I can help you keep this boundary or whatever, you know, the situation is, Mm -hmm. um, if you want to give them another, you know, reminder or shot, that's up to you. Um, I think it's really about assessing, the like energy exchange like is this a Mm -hmm. small boundary that I'm okay with reminding them for the next three months or is this a bigger boundary that this has been going on for years and this is simply not like something that I can sustain right now um so maybe you have a stronger boundary you can you know speak to them again and be like maybe we take a break um you know and and explaining to them like you seem like you're really gonna help you know listen to me and help me mm-hmm. out with meeting this boundary. And then you didn't. So I think I need to set a stronger one. And I hope that you're okay with that. Or you recognize like, you know, this is what I need right now. It has nothing to do with you. It's just for me, it's hard to sustain this. Um, and that can, that can be like a long-term or like have no end date. Right. I think a lot of people will put pressure on us um, to be like, okay, well, how much time do you need? Like a week, like a month, you know, like, and that's mm-hmm. more, your decision and you can you can uh, voice that like you know I don't know I'll I'll check back in two weeks or like I don't know I'll just I just need to work on this with you know have this space and when I'm ready I'll reach out to you let me know if that's cool or if you're just like no screw you I'm I'm out you know like mm-hmm. there's, there's definitely like different steps that you can take um but it really kind of depends on like the person and how much you're willing to like like I've had this so like my my biggest boundary that I have in my life has been with my parents. Um, Mm -hmm. With my dad, like he was not a very um, present father (laughs) and um, he really, like he really wasn't there for most of my childhood. And then he started to go blind and he was like, I want to have a relationship with you. I'm realizing I was like 13 or 14. And that was hard for me because I was like, well, you hurt me as a kid. So I, I expressed those, you know, feelings to him and I was a young kid and I didn't know <laughs> how to stand mm-hmm. up for myself and all that. So I still went to go see him, even though I wasn't feeling good about it myself. And then as I went into college, I, you know, went to therapy, I started learning about like forgiving myself and not seeking his approval. And we were, so I was like, okay, I feel like I have the tools now to reach out to him and have like an over the phone relationship because he lives in a different state. And Mm -hmm. um, we started having that and then he crossed the boundary and I was like, okay, I'm just, I'm not going to talk to you then because you, we talked about you, you didn't lie, don't lie to me. And then you lied to me, you know? So I didn't talk to him for a whole year because I needed that time to regroup and to heal and to like, you know, figure out what was still left that was, you know, bothering me. And then Mm -hmm. I, you know, reached out to him again and he, he kind of like, that was the wake up call he needed. He was like, Oh shoot. Like I'm willing to try and change. Like, how can we work it out? So I think like, sometimes it can feel like, like the end of the world, like we're never going to have that relationship with these people, but sometimes we just need the time and we don't know how long it's going to take, but it's worth it because, you know, now we have a great relationship. I call him multiple times a week, you know, like he under, he got the message. Like this was something that was really important to me. And he was like, I'm willing to fix it. I want to have something. And I was finally mature enough to be like, I worked through the stuff. Like I'm okay. Now I can communicate my needs better. So don't be like ashamed or don't be like sad. If you're, if you're like, oh, I don't want to like, not have this person in my life, you know, like you're the most important person for you. So you need to make sure it's still good for you. Yeah. I, I appreciate that story so much. (laughs) And, you know, it's, it's interesting because some people do get it and some people don't. Mm -hmm. And like we've been talking, it's definitely a case by case basis. And I can really also appreciate the story of the dad because I told uh, my students many a times, I just, I blocked my dad from my phone. You know, we've had an on and off uh, relationship for many years. And actually, because I had such a strong 
male presence in my life growing up, my papa, my uncles, my stepdad, I did not realize that my dad really wasn't there until I was 17. Like, that's how crazy it was. I didn't think he was out of sight, out of mind. Mm -hmm. And uh, like, I worked on reestablishing relationships. And the last one, this was like years ago. Now I can't even tell you how many years I said, okay, let's have a monthly dinner. That's it. That fell through. We talked again, that fell through. And I wasn't as, uh, and I'm showing my accountability here, I wasn't as thorough in my communication, like, hey, like, look, man, we haven't been communicating over the years, you want to live your life, that's cool. But, you know, here's how I feel, because honestly, I didn't have a really a, a strong opinion about hanging out. I'm just like, you're my dad, let's make this work, just a neutral relationship. Mm. So when, and, and, and so the time came where I had to make a decision because sometimes people won't get it. And again, maybe I could have been a little bit more in my, uh, better my communication skill, but this also was like, I don't know, maybe like five, six, seven, I don't know, uh, quite some time now. <laughs> and I just had enough. And so I just block, 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 phone, everything. And th the thing is, when we did communicate, we were literally on the same path. When I was changing the way I was eating, he was changing his diet as well. And I think when, when we look at it, we have to also be okay with the decisions that we make. Because I, I don't think about it. So you brought it up. I'm like, oh my gosh, that sounds kind of familiar. <laughs> so I, what I'm saying is, I, I love how you were talking about really accountability when you're checking in with the time, like, Hey, you know, I don't know a week, two weeks. I don't know. I got to get back to you. And I like that. Now you and your dad have that relationship where there's an understanding mm -hmm. and that's what we really want at the end of the day and understanding. And sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. Now could my dad and I somewhere along the line circle back maybe, but I'm not pressed for it. So I'm glad that you presented that situation and let people know that, you know, there can be a shift, a turn, a new leaf, which is also a case by case basis. And when people have that uh, accountability and, you know, just that, that talk, that is a possibility. And so, sometimes it's just like, oh, you know what? I'm done. When something can be saved, depending on the situation. Yeah. Yeah, I think that I took that experience and like, I, you know, when I started getting, I don't have the best relationship with my mom right now. So it's like kind of flip flops, but um, <laughs> I, uh, I kind of learned from the experience with my dad that, oh, I needed a break from my mom because every time I was talking with her on the phone, I was getting triggered. I was saying things to her out of, you know, anger, out of hurt. And I realized like, I don't, you know, holding myself accountable. I don't want to be the, in that kind of relationship. I don't want to like be upset every time I talk to her for myself and for my own you right. know, being, but also like, I don't want to treat her like that and be angry at her mm -hmm. every time I talk. So it's like, then I was like, I need to take a break, you know, like, because I clearly have stuff that I need to work through that I'm being triggered by still. I thought maybe I was, you know, past it or I could be okay with it. And it's like, I'm actually checking in with myself in the time and realizing like, there's something still here that I will need to work on and like taking that step back. Cause it is, it's for both people. Like it's for yourself so that you can do the work, but also like, you don't want to further like ruin the relationship by keep adding more hurt to it from mm -hmm. both ends. So yeah, it is tricky. And you know, some people will get it. Like you said, and some people won't get it. And that's where, like, I've seen lots of people that they're like, I just cut my family members out of my life because those are usually the hardest ones to cut out of your life. But they've been a lot happier. They realize, like, how much, you know, negativity was coming from that relationship. And, like, it's sad because we always want to have a relationship with our family. But, you know, you have to think about your well-being. And sometimes it's just not worth that, like, constant re-triggering and traumatizing. Right. A absolutely. And, you know, m my dad, he didn't do anything wrong. He just wasn't there. <laughs> he just wanted to live his life. So I'm like, that's cool, you know, because like I wasn't thinking about you, but it's just as an adult, if I'm like, okay, let's try to reestablish something and it just felt like it fails and fails and fails, then 
I have nothing for you, dude. <laughs> you know? So yeah. it's one of those things that, yeah, we just have to be at peace with it and understand that, you know, like you said, we have to honor our emotions and put ourselves first. Some people change, some people don't, but we have to see that through. Mm-hmm. And 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 th- this process of protection and cleansing will help us see that, so we're not making assumptions. So we can just see it for what it is, and see if we need to take a step back, as you were saying, regroup, and you know, then approach that person, people, or situations, or not. Mm-hmm. And and the options that you provided are so helpful because especially in this day and age where so many people put their business online and you just see in some ways that the end result or a snippet of it, you don't see the rest of the story. Sometimes it's hard for people to, to look at that and go, Hmm, maybe I should apply that to my life because maybe that, you know, it's, 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 it's just so many ways things can happen. But if we focus on ourselves first, like you were saying, connect with the wind, you know, think about, you know, being in the dirt or in a hammock or stuff like that. Now we have that sense of clarity. Now we can shake it off. And I love dolls. So I love that example. So we can shake it off. We can, you know, recalibrate our nervous system so we can address this properly because it is a lot of emotions. And if we don't set up that protection, that boundaries, that cleansing, the the real change that's needed, the healing, the peace is is not going to come or it won't come in the way that is enough. Mm -hmm. And something that is just my thing, my guides are reminding me of um, is like understanding for yourself, like what programs you might have with this type of relationship. So like we were talking about Mm -hmm. parents and family, like there might be a lot of shame or judgment around like you know familial duties and things like that Mm -hmm. so also giving yourself the time to feel into those too and realize like am I actually like feeling like I don't need this boundary or am I just feeling shame and guilt around setting the boundary and I'm gonna like go back on it you know so like you're saying having that cleansing and protecting um, to have that clarity so that we know where the healing needs to be, right? So all of these together can help us, you know, to shed light on, okay, is it just that I'm being triggered by a past trauma with this person or something that's similar that that person reminds me of? Or am I, you know, still trying to reenact this program of shame or guilt or judgment or fear, you know, like with relationship, like romantic relationships, people have that fear of like being alone, that if they end it, then they won't find someone better, you know, like, so understanding that maybe where understanding where our emotions are coming from and what they're being motivated by will also help give you a lot of clarity for like, the decision, you know, how we talked about like sitting with yourself, then creating the boundary, but also like upholding the boundary and knowing like, Mm -hmm. if I'm judging myself and feeling shame around this, like, then I need to work to remove that and remind myself that that's okay. That's like generational or something, you know, that it's just influencing me and affecting me still. And I still deserve to have my feelings heard, even though I'm feeling like there should be some kind of like sense of duty or something around this. Absolutely. And second to last question, a a lot of times having boundaries and, you know, focus on protection and cleansing for people is hard because they don't have a support system. Mm -hmm. What are some of your tips for people to have a support system? Because I I look at it as, well, I'm my first support system, but I'm very thankful for my best friend. (laughs) So what, what are some tips people can, can, um, can uh, take in that can help them with a support system so they can really, you know, have that extra boost to help them stand on their boundaries and so forth. Yeah. So definitely like, you know, working with a professional, if you have the ability Mm -hmm. to can be a great support system. Um, If you do have friends that, you know, it doesn't need to be one friend for everything or one person for everything, you know, like, maybe your uncle is really good at helping you with your relationship and your best friend helps you with your mom's relationship, you know? So like Mm, different mm. realizing that not everybody can do everything and, you know, 
taking advantage of who you do have that is willing to help you or willing to be there for you. Um, you know, just, I like to just tell people ahead of time, like, are you able to hold space for me right now around this, you know, and Mm. if they're willing to do that, um, in the witch community on Instagram, if you're a part of that, there's tons of people that would love to hold space for other people. So that's also Mm -hmm. an option, you know, asking them first, um, in terms of like spiritually or like energetically, definitely your spirit guides are always there for you. I realized this past like few months that like I would rely on my, or I would consult my, um, spirit team, but I never like allowed them to support me and actually like energetically and emotionally hold space for me. They like literally came through and were like, you're holding on and creating all this emotional armor for things that you don't need to be working on. Like, let us carry that for you. So Mm. that's something that you can, you can either ask them for advice on like, can you help me? You know, like, and spirit team could be past loved one ancestors or your spirit guides or any other like beings you work with, you know, they can help you to, you know, create the boundary. Um, or they can just like hold you, like you can feel them holding you, you know, so you can have that like emotional support. Um, something that I think is really cool that I've, I've done a few times. Um, you can actually connect with your future self, And they can hold space for you, you know, like people talk, like I do inner child work, right? Like we're connecting with our past selves, but you can also connect with like 80 year old you and talk to them and and they've lived that stuff so they can, and who better to trust than your future self, right? Like (laughs) you know who you are so they can like, kind of like show you like, yeah, you held that boundary and this is how like this worked out. It was great for you. Like you were able to soar because you weren't being held back by these people in your life. Or, you know, like, oh, yeah, you did that. But that was such a blip on the radar. Like, don't overthink it. You know, like it passed so quickly. So that's something like you can ask them for advice. Um, You know, there's also self-help books that help like give us perspective and stuff. Like if you if you're like, I want to talk to an expert, but I don't have like hundreds of dollars, you know, to go to therapy or something. Um, And also, like, I, I talked a lot about nature. I really love like communicating with trees and just like feeling their like even if you're like I don't know how the heck to talk to trees like you can just sit in nature and tap in and kind of like resonate with its vibration and it will Mm -hmm. immediately feel like supportive and loving to you amazing yeah I I also communicate with my future self. <laughs> so I, I like, oh my gosh, you said it. Yeah, that's awesome. And last question, any final thoughts? Mm, final thoughts. There's something I did want to say before, but again, it has escaped me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think like this is definitely, I want to say like, this is a practice. So like, don't feel bad if you make mistakes. Like if you hurt somebody's feelings along the way, it's really about like, reflecting and owning up to those mistakes you know like how even when we were both talking about our stories you're like I admit like I didn't do this the best I was like yeah I I realized I wasn't communicating the best like we're human we're gonna make mistakes and like many of us I like to think of it as like there's people who came from well-adjusted families who learned how to properly communicate and then there's a majority of us who didn't so it's like recognizing that you have like a handicap you know in this golf game like you Mm -hmm. (laughs) you're starting out from a place where you're gonna have to learn more you're gonna have to practice more but you're doing it and that's what's important so if it's not perfect if it's messy if you're not sure the best ways how to do that and you're learning as you're going like that's what matters is that you're making an effort because you know many of us have seen like like I was talking about like when my, my parents like they didn't learn this and there's in their like almost 60s now so just the fact that you're like I want to do this is like a huge feat um and also knowing that like you're not responsible for other people and their responses like we don't know what they're going through but you just gotta be there for yourself (laughs) Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah like it's easier said than done but yeah and I also like how you brought up you don't need all the tools and things like I make apothecary products for like cleansing and protection but like you don't need them like it's all just a reflection of your internal power and your internal energy so you don't need to like do anything or be anything you have it already within you beautiful but they do help as like a nice little bonus not gonna lie like when I spray and it smells nice like ah 
yeah, beautiful. Yeah. Raise my vibration. <laughs> it, it helps. Like you're using, you know, plant magic and their energy. And like I said, like I like to have a physical thing that helps me focus my energy. So it's totally. Right. Yeah. 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 It's sort of like when you use makeup for glamour magic, like you're already beautiful and you're using that as like a little extra, you know, it's like nothing wrong with that. Yeah, <laughs> That's exactly. all good. <laughs> Yeah, well, um, I'm doing sorry, five things. Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, no, no, go, go ahead. I'm sorry. I thought you were done talking. By all means, continue, please. <laughs> I was just saying, like, sometimes if you're really not feeling it, like, I use, like, five different, you know, witchcraft things at once because, like, I just, I need to get that extra boost. <laughs> I'm not feeling it. Like, there's no shame in that either, so... <laughs> Oh, yeah, absolutely. It's just like, you know, every now and then we need help, you know, it doesn't mean that we're not strong. We just need like a, a power up you know, every now and then, you know, it's, it's all good. But, you know, it, thank you so much for being on the show, man. It was a pleasure. And again, you provide such a refreshing perspective. I love having you on the show. So again, thank you so much. And to all the listeners, you know, I'm sending you so many blessings, lots of love. You know, I'm rooting for you. Be kind to yourself. Until next time. Thank you for having me. Bye, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in, Magical One. Let's keep in touch. Join the VIP email list by going to tmariejohnson.com. And as always, I'm sending you lots of love, many blessings. I'm rooting for you and remember to be kind to yourself until next time.